Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, tools of your shields, dead slayers, peasants, vassals, minions. Minions. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And uh, today I want to go to uh, Saudi Arabia, sort of, uh, to talk about ISIS or the Islamic State. A very interesting link uh, interview just uh, several days ago uh, in a Moroccan uh, media. And unfortunately, the entire interview, 33 minutes uh, long, is all in a language I do not understand, but uh, the article itself uh, purports to uh, make some startling claims. And uh, so let's get into this. It's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, a Saudi Shura council member named Dr. Isa El Gaith, Gaith has said that the uh, ISIS is backed by international intelligence agencies of key regional players, including the U.S., Iran, and Israel. And they're, and they're all involved in funding and arming uh, ISIS. And so a startling claim. Uh, one has to take into account, of course, it's coming from Saudi sources. We know that uh, to a certain degree that there's uh, some Saudi funding, whether it's private or governmental uh, funding, uh, or something orchestrated through Prince Bandar uh, to have uh, money and arms funneled to at least Sunni insurgents in uh, in Iraq, who have ended up joining up with ISIS, but uh, certainly Saudi Arabia could have some involvement as well. And I've done videos of all, all these interconnections and possible bad actors who are behind the scenes in this sudden appearance of this group, the Islamic State. And uh, so he goes on to say that, uh, uh, that the withdrawal of Iraqi forces from Mosul and other areas was a tactical maneuver to allow ISIS to seize the weapons. And that's a point that's been made uh, to by other pundits as well. It's something that uh, seems like a no-brainer in some respects. Uh, and we have accounts of, of uh, Iraqi soldiers basically saying that the officers told them to uh, leave their equipment and abandon their posts. And uh, uh, it was either a co coordination with ISIS elements or uh, it was a coordination uh, with intelligence uh, of, uh, operatives or both. So uh, the fact that this uh, uh, Saudi official addresses these very specific issues is, is interesting in, in itself. And then he further pointed out that the ISIS hasn't attacked either Iran or Israel. And uh, once again, that's a, a very interesting question. Uh, I, I did a video myself of, of why uh, the big question, why hasn't Al-Qaeda done a major uh, a dramatic attack on Israel? Uh, supposedly one of its uh, foes, uh, one of the main foes and focal points, theoretically, of a certain amount of jihad in that region. And um, so now we have the fact that uh, uh, there's other evidence that uh, Israel has been involved in supplying uh, field hospitals in, in the Golan Heights and p perhaps parts of Iraq for uh, Al-Qaeda and uh, ISIS. And this has been uh, documented at least as best we can from the vantage point from where we're, we're at. But uh, so that's a, a pretty interesting point. He, he's saying that the intelligence of the U.S., Iran, and Israel was involved in setting this up and behind it. And... Um, now uh, those said players are are not being attacked, and uh, and and the uh, Saudi official goes on to call it a, a fake jihad, which I, a term I I like, and uh, he added that these practices, and he's referring to all these atrocities and, and the ramping up of the violence. He added these practices are only giving colonial powers argument to go back to the region, and that's a, another reason why. I felt like there was a certain credibility to this report because that's a very interesting uh, thing to say uh, that, the, that those very atrocities, as he, he very uh, perceptively sees, are being used to manipulate the American public, the war-weary American public, and uh, actually getting them to support another uh, onslaught of U.S. intervention in the Middle East. So, uh, and but uh, the very, very, very most interesting comment in this whole interview is he said that he likened the terror organization ISIS to a sacrificial lamb which is being fattened in preparation for a slaughter. 
And uh, not only that, is that a very vivid um, description, but uh, what a uh, policy, because uh, w we've uh, heard this idea discussed before that if it is a, uh, a movement that is created and manipulated ultimately by Western uh, interests, uh, including the U.S. and Israel, then the, what would be a goal, and one goal, of course, would be to concentrate uh, all the radicals, all the jihadists into one uh, group. And, and now, for the most part, they're kind of out in the open in Syria, and they're kind of out in the open in Iraq. And uh, supposedly uh, 50 to 80,000 strong at this point, rumor has it. And um, the idea that they're being uh, fattened up uh, in preparation for slaughter is a very, very interesting comment to make, uh, as if uh, that is the ultimate goal. And uh, certainly uh, multiple goals could be achieved that fit into this scenario uh, outlined by this Saudi official that go in a line with Israeli and U.S. and Saudi uh, interests, as well as, interestingly enough, uh, Iranian interests. And that's the, the idea of, of uh, using this uh, ISIS uh, uh, incursion as an excuse to both enter the conflict in Syria, to uh, basically uh, change regimes in Iraq, and, uh, uh, and, and ultimately break up Iraq and uh, change the geopolitical scene in the Middle East and, and redraw some of these borders, and uh, as well as uh, to continue the dismantling of uh, any of uh, Israel's potential adversaries in the region, and then uh, and then ultimately to uh, to concentrate and uh, uh, take out uh, as many as these uh, jihadis from all around the world. Uh, so that's another interesting aspect of this. Uh, we reportedly are having thousands of new recruits every week and every month and uh, more and more concentration of all these potential jihadis and uh, so what if it is a situation where the sacrificial lamb is being prepared for the slaughter and uh, so anyway for those reasons and some of these insights I put a little credence into uh, what this uh, Saudi official is saying and, uh, so there we have it I'll put the uh, report below and uh, I hope to hear more about this interview because uh, it's a very interesting perspective and certainly fits in with uh, other uh, uh, ideas that I've uh, mentioned in previous videos. I'm a useful idiot. I thought you'd be one too.